Today, we are going to do an introduction to the Laplace transform. So I've actually written the Laplace transform right here. It's this um, integral equation in blue. Um, I will, uh, one, you'll be like wildly familiar with it by the time we get through all this. Um, and two, um, you, hopefully after today, you'll see where it comes from. Um, and, and as we move along, you'll see why it's, why it does so many amazing things. Um, I wrote this up, um, using a little Laplace transform to solve a differential equation is an almost magical mathematical process. And why is it? Because if I have a differential equation like X double prime minus 10 X prime plus six X equals T squared sine of T. Say I got that mess. It, it, this is. This is complicated to solve, right? It's got all these derivatives in it. Um, what the Laplace transform does is it gets rid of the derivatives. I can apply the Laplace transform to this entire equation, and then I'll take that equation and totally get rid of the derivatives. What it does is it turns all that calculus into algebra. And then I manipulate it algebraically. So I'll do a Laplace transform, manipulate this algebraically, and then I will apply a reverse um, or an inverse Laplace transform to get the solution to our differential equation. Um, let me show you what that looks like in general. Um, I have a DE. Um, it's got X of T. It's got X prime of T. It's got X double prime of T. Um, it's got inputs F, F of T's, etc. Right? You should be able to identify all those pieces up here. Um, what I do is I apply the Laplace transform. That's a squiggly arrow. That's one of the notations that we're going to use. Um, I get a new equation. Um, and it has different variables. And we'll get into that. You'll see that. Then I sort of change the way it looks. Um, I, I use some algebra. And I get a different but equivalent um, equation. All right. Um, so a form of, so it's a new different form of this equation just solved in a different way. And then what I do, I do an inverse Laplace transform. Sorry, this is a cursive L. Oh, that's the best. I do an inverse Laplace, and that gives me the solution to the DE. So um, if I could, what I would do with this one, I would apply the Laplace transform. I would get a new equation. I would mess with it, I would inverse it, and I would get X of T. No characteristic equations, no undetermined coefficients, no guessing at all. It just does everything for us. Um, um, uh, and it does some things as well that we can't do with some of the methods that we've learned so far. Um, I wanted to put this up right here because I need you to keep this in mind the whole time. Um, figuring out, getting all the steps to be able to do this right here is going to take some serious time. Usually it takes like a week or so um, to figure out how to do all of this. And then after that, we're going to learn how to do the rest of it and solve the solutions. So you got to be patient with this method because um, it's not going to be something that we can get solutions to things real quickly with. Um, um, so... I said that this is the equation for it. I'm going to show you where that comes from. But um, you are going to do a little mini anti-set for this. So I want you to do um, how many integrals? A handful. I want you to do the integral from 1 to 3 of 3x squared dx. I want you to do the integral from 0 to pi of um, sine x dx. I want you to do the integral from um, 0 to 2 of um, a 
times x cubed dx, where a is a constant, right? It could be any number, but it doesn't change. It's constant. Um, and then the last one I want you to do is the integral from, um, uh, what is it? No, no, this is a definite, an indefinite integral. The integral of e to the negative 10x. And actually, I want you to do one more. I want you to do the integral of t squared e, oh, whoops. It's a dx. I want you to do the integral of um, x squared e to the x dx. So hit pause, do all those, um, and then I'll, I'll just pop the solutions up. I'm not going to walk through all the steps for all these because I think you guys should be good with all these. Um, but hit pause, um, and then I will put the answers up. Okay, here come the answers. Here we go. You should get 26. Hopefully I didn't mess any of these up. 26. It's x cubed evaluated from uh, 1 to 3. Ba boom. Uh, this one you should get 2. There's some messy double negatives all over the place. Um, remember we get a negative cosine x when we integrate that. Um, this one right here, remember a is a constant, so it's a times one fourth x to the fourth evaluated from zero to two, which is a times this, which gives me four a, I think. Um, e to the negative 10 x integrates to one tenth e to the negative 10 x plus a constant. This one is not a definite integral. And this one, I have to use some integration by parts, which should be pretty good with at this point. And um, don't forget your alternating signs. This integrate side was not that bad because every um, little level here is an e to the x. It gives me x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x plus 2x plus c. Now, what I want you to see here is that, um, that there are two takeaways. Well, there's, there's, I sort of have three goals here. One has to do with the top three. I want you to notice with these three, I had an x function integrated with respect to x for each of them. What came out of it? Well, the first one, I got a number. There are no x's in this. Same thing that this one. There are no x's in this. And in fact, in the third one, there are no x's. So the thing that I'm trying to get you to see here is if I'm integrating a function of x with respect to x, if it's a dx, then I'm not going to get any x's in my answers. The x gets integrated out. If I was doing an integral dt, the t would get integrated out. And that will happen all the time because I'm evaluating this thing from x equals 0 to 2. I'm plugging in values for that thing, right? And I can't really have like an x here and an x there. That wouldn't make any sense. Um, notice in the third one, I had that constant a, right? The different, different variable, it's not related to the x. So when I integrated, I treated it as a constant. And I got that 4a out. If I had an A, B, C right here, that would have an A, B, C right here. As long as those guys are not dependent on the X. thing I want you to see that with the next one is I want you to see that chain rule show up. And then here, I want you to get practice with integration by parts, um, specifically this one with this X squared. So hopefully you um, feel good with those ideas and you, are, um, you were able to get those integrals. Or if you didn't, you see what went wrong and you're like, all right, yeah, cool. I could do that now. So that takes us to um, uh, the, the yeah, I guess, starting ideas of the Laplace transform. What I'm going to do here is show you what this formula, where it comes from. It's going to take a little bit of time. I probably won't finish in this video. Um, but to do it, um, I'm going to write something. And I want you to, in your head, be like, I want you to tell me when you recognize it and you're like, oh, I know what that is, right? So I'm going to write, and some of you may groan, 1 plus x, okay, nothing really special so far, plus x squared over 2 factorial, maybe you're seeing it, plus x cubed over 3 factorial, probably see it x to the fourth over four factorial plus let me go out for forever x to the nth over n factorial do you know what this is do you re you should recognize it do you know what it is it is a function it is a function you should know 
Um, it was one of the ones from last year that was like it was like the most. It was it was the easiest one to remember. This is e to the x, and it is equal to that. If I could go out for forever, do an an, an infinite number of those terms, let n go to infinity, um, then uh, we would get a function, a polynomial that would land right on top of e to the x. So what is this? What's a better way to write this? Instead of writing all these all these terms out right here, I can use summation notation. So I can write e to the x is equal to sum from n equals zero to infinity of um, x to the n over n factorial. This right here says the exact same thing as this. Um, and you know, I could change the way that looks. I'm, I'm manipulating it a little bit just because I, I have, I, I want you to see it in a different way. I could also write that as sum n equals one, or sorry, zero to infinity of one over n factorial times x to the n. What I want you to notice is this is a function of n, right? There are no x's in there, right? I could also write it as sum from n equals zero to infinity of a sub n times x to the n, uh, where a sub n is equal to 1 over n factorial. And you may say, okay, yeah, you just wrote the same thing in like four different ways. Well, what I'm trying to point out here is that I can change the a sub n, and what that does is it changes the function. Each different a sub n is associated with a different function if it doesn't diverge. And that's a lot of what we learned about or we're supposed to learn about last year in, um, in what you call it, in BC or in Calculus 2. So, for example, if I let a sub n be equal to um, uh, 1 over n, uh, times negative 1 to the n plus 1. It's not one that you probably remember right now, but that gives me sigma n equals 0 to infinity of um, 1 over n times negative 1 to the n plus 1 times x to the n. If I could graph that out, um, that would be equal to ln of 1 plus x. Um, I'll write it to be accurate, on an interval. And a lot of the ratio test work that we did, which we are not doing here, don't worry, we're not doing that here. This is not a Taylor series unit, okay? But we're using it. We're going to take advantage of it in the very beginning. But that all the ratio work was to figure out that interval. But this thing converged, so I probably shouldn't really use the equal sign. I should define that interval, but I'm just going to say on the interval because I don't really care here. But this is associated with ln of 1 plus x. This a sub n right there is associated with ln of 1 plus x. This one is associated with e to the x. Um, there's others. For example, sigma. And this one would have to be written a little bit differently um, because of the way that uh, I wrote the exponent. But um, I could write sigma n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over parentheses 2n factorial times x to the 2n, and that is going to converge on cosine of x. Um, so this guy with the 2 there, that's how it's different from these guys, but you know, whatever. Let's just throw a 2 in there, right? Maybe you can make the 2 part of this somehow, whatever. Or maybe I can manipulate this thing so that it skips, right, or something. I don't know, whatever. But look, this guy is is associated with cosine of x. So um, that's the big idea here, is that when I had these Taylor series, I gave you a sequence, and that went when I multiplied it by some x, x to the n, a power, a, a, a summation of powers of x's, that I got functions out of them. So it was that association that we cared about. And I will um, show you why that matters in the next video.